In 1926, a mansion was built out in Woodside, California that was designed by one of the most prominent architects in California at the time. And this place was built for one of the most influential American businessmen to have ever lived. Nicknamed the Jackling House after its original owner, this historically significant mansion was later bought by Steve Jobs in 1984 when he was only 29 years old. But for some reason, even though this home was loaded with history, Steve seemed adamant about tearing the place down from the day he bought it. After a decade-long battle with the city and some heated lawsuits with historic preservationists, Jobs finally tore the historic home down just months before he passed away. The whole story is a bit strange. Jobs was even accused of intentionally leaving the windows and doors open so that squatters and rain would get inside. That way he could prove to the city that the house really couldn't be saved and needed to be demolished. In today's episode, we are going to first take a look at some old photos of this historic home. We'll talk about exactly what Steve did with this house when he was alive and what his vision was for the property. And of course, last, we'll dive into all of the drama surrounding the demolition. I'll let you guys know my opinion at the end, but I'm really curious also to hear what you have to say in the comments as to whether or not Steve Jobs was in the right to tear this place down or if he should have tried to preserve the Jackling House. So this all started back in the 1920s when there was this millionaire businessman named Daniel Jackling who just wanted to build a beautiful home for his family out in Woodside, California. Jackling was an American mining engineer who focused on exploitation of copper at a copper mine in Utah. His career started in the 1890s and it really took off around 1904 when he pioneered open pit mining which ended up being super profitable and it helped him to grow his mine to the largest operation in the world. An entire documentary could be made on this Daniel Jackling guy's life but let's just put it this way he was definitely a visionary and an inspiration. When he was ready to build a home for his family Jackling hired an architect named George Washington Smith. George was an easy pick at the time because he was one of California's best architects architects and he was credited to be the creator of the Spanish colonial revival style of architecture that you still see to this day all over the Southwest. The architect George Washington Smith actually used to be an artist and he carried his art over into architecture for sure. One of the historic preservationists who studied this guy said that he would actually try to design his houses to look like something out of painting. Anyways, Daniel Jackling selected the location at 460 Mountain Home Road for his new George Washington Smith design home to be built and for anybody not familiar with the area this is a pocket about 30 miles south of San Francisco and this exact location was tucked right up against the parks and preserves along the southwest part of Woodside. The location was a good fit for Daniel Jackling and not surprisingly it ended up being a good fit for Steve Jobs many years later. The house is actually only about 20 minutes away from Apple's offices in Silicon Valley. The home that George Washington Smith designed for the Jackling family of course checked all of the boxes that you would expect for a lavish mansion. It had 17,000 square feet of living space. There were a total of 30 rooms, including 14 bedrooms and another 14 bathrooms. It had six acres of land at the time with, of course, lush landscaping and manicured gardens. And to top it off, it was designed to be very private for the Jackling family. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to dig up any photos from when the Jacklings owned this house, but there are a few batches of photos available online from when Steve Jobs owned it. Let's flip through a few of these photos together, and I think that you guys will probably start to form the same opinion that I have on this entire matter after you see the place. So you can see from the outside this is obviously the gated entrance. It's got a little sign that says private property. I don't even think those gates work anymore. Both of the columns are falling over at this point. Here's a nighttime picture of the house from the yard. You can't get too much of a feel for the architecture here but you can see already that the windows and doors at this point had been boarded up. Now we've got a little bit more of a zoomed out version of the house so you can get a better feel for the architecture. I know I've got a lot of architects who follow this channel. Let me know guys what you think about the architecture of this house. Obviously it looks historic but to me it's not 
all that impressive, at least from this perspective. No idea what's going on here or why this is a relevant picture, but we've got like some plant material there above the window and then a window that's obviously boarded. I think this is supposed to showcase some of the unique architecture. There's a very uh, pointed archway there. It's like a medieval looking archway over the staircase. Here's a picture of one of the chandeliers that's hanging over probably a foyer area, I'm guessing, next to the staircase. Another angle of probably one of the living spaces. We've got a fireplace in the back, some high ceilings with some wood detail there on the ceilings and a chandelier that's totally fallen apart. Here is the kitchen. Not much to see here. A bunch of doors and drawers are open on these otherwise kind of unimpressive and just run-of-the-mill cabinetry as far as I can tell. And then here was something that you don't see nowadays. This was a big pipe organ that was actually built into the house and it was kind of integrated into that wall that you see behind it. I don't know much about how these things work or anything, but I would love to hear that thing play nowadays. That'd be awesome. Last is just a really sad picture of this place in total disrepair. There's a ton of mold that appears to be on the ceiling and an old appliance that has been duct taped shut. So there you have it. Unfortunately, this place wasn't all that well documented prior to it being torn down, so we can't see it in all of its glory. But I think that pipe organ for sure is my favorite feature in the house, at least from what we were able to see. I guess back in the day before radio was mainstream, if you wanted to listen to music in your house and you were someone who had some money, then you could put one of these pipe organs in your house and then you could have your butler set it up to automatically play music in the evenings when you got home from work pretty awesome. So Steve Jobs bought this famous house in 1984 for $3.5 million and he lived there for 10 years before he ended up moving to Palo Alto with his family. Apparently Jobs did enjoy the Jackling house at first but some of the quirky design elements just became annoying to him as time passed. So that's why he moved out and at that time he leased the place out for about six years until around the year 2000. After those tenants moved out in 2000, Steve Jobs got way more aggressive with his attempts to get approval to get the house demolished just so that he could make room for a much smaller and more modern house to put in his place. The original owner, Daniel Jackling, was kind of an eccentric and odd guy and he really made a point to design this house to flaunt his wealth. And with Jobs being a pretty publicly controlling guy himself, especially in his business with Apple, it didn't come as a huge surprise that he wasn't interested in living in another man's creation. Over those following years from the year 2000 to 2005, Jobs kind of famously let the house continue to deteriorate and ultimately doing all of that did help his case to eventually get approval to demolish the property. The efforts to tear down this historic home got ugly pretty fast because Steve Jobs just wanted to take the house down, but all of the opponents within the community would have much rather just seen him spend the five or 10 million bucks to restore the place rather than scrape it. Jobs pursued a demo permit for years, but the town and advocates continued to fight back again and again. There was a group called UOH who sued Jobs saying that he was breaking a California law by trying to destroy a cultural landmark. But after a heated battle that seemed like it would never come to an end, including lawsuits and court appeals, Steve Jobs was finally granted approval to tear down the Jackling House in 2010. By February of 2011, the entire house was demolished just eight months before Steve Jobs passed away from pancreatic cancer. Leading up to the demolition of the Jackling House, part of the agreement of the whole process was that anything of historical value within the house would be allowed to be removed and held to be later put in a museum. Not long after, there was a Jackling House exhibit that was opened up at the Woodside Community Museum that featured some old photos of the home. Plus, they did grab some artifacts that are presented in this glass case, like some light fixtures, some personal photos, some tiles, and other bits of small furniture from around the place. Unfortunately, that awesome organ that we were looking at earlier was not able to be saved. I read that some local organ specialist tried to take the thing apart and bring it with them and restore it, but they ran out of money for the project, so they ended up just selling it for parts. Five years after Steve Jobs had passed, his wife did propose a new home for the site here in Woodside. Public records don't say that the property has exchanged hands anytime recently, so it's not 100% clear to me whether his wife still owns the house or not. But if you look at the lot on Google Earth now, you can see a new modern L-shaped home with a large swimming pool and solar on top that's in construction. And with this image being a few years old, 
chances are the house that we see here is now 100% finished. I said that I'd give my thoughts at the end of the video on all of this, here's where I stand. Now I am all for historic preservation. A lot of you guys know that I actually live in a historically designated home myself and one that is filled with vintage furniture. But with that being said, I think that I'm gonna side with Steve Jobs on this case. I mean, I guess what this really boils down to for me is I just don't see the Jackling house as a house that's really all that worthy of being saved. It's a cool enough house, but we just saw the photos. It was in horrible condition when it was torn down. And just because a copper mining millionaire built this place with a well-known architect, doesn't mean that the place absolutely needs to stand until the end of time. If you enjoyed the episode today, guys, hit that thumbs up button down below before you go. That really helps the channel out a lot. But that's all I've got for you guys this episode. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, see ya.